Today I rise to speak in support of a bill that offers us a great opportunity. We have been talking about Pennsylvania's public pension crisis for many years. Today we have a bill in front of us that addresses in a positive way the single most pressing issue facing the citizens, taxpayers, schools, and employees in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Today we are going to make history by scoring a victory for everyone who dares to hope that this legislative body can look past short-term political gain and instead make decisions in the long-term best interests of the people of our state, not just today, but for generations to come. As mentioned earlier by the gentleman from Chester County, Senate Bill 1, as amended by the House State Government Committee, represents a balanced approach. It recognizes the need for compromise to get a workable product to achieve meaningful solutions to real problems. This bill protects the stability of our system while respecting the dignity of every current retiree, every current employee, and every future employee in our state. This meaningful pension reform proposal is built upon respect for taxpayers who are unfortunately already on the hook for the mistakes of the past. The unsustainable $53 billion burden caused by politicians' mismanagement of the current system is something that our state will have to deal with for many years to come. Should we continue the current system without changes and expect the problem to go away? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. This bill in front of us enables us to save taxpayers from shouldering further increasing burdens caused by the current unsustainable pension system and will save over $10 billion over the next 30 years. Furthermore, a failure to work toward a sustainable fix to our system will likely lead to broken promises. We have seen this example in Detroit, where bankruptcy proceedings have resulted in cuts to the benefits promised to current employees and current retirees. Shouldn't we take the hint from this? Shouldn't we reform our system before it gets to that point? The sound bites on this issue suggest that the supporters of this proposal are the ones attacking the pension system. In fact, just the opposite is true. The supporters of this proposal are the ones who are acting in good faith to save the pension benefits that have been promised by SIRS and PSIRS. This bill enacts meaningful reforms to save the system, and it does so by respecting the needs of everyone involved, current retirees, current employees, future employees, the students in our schools, those who depend on state services, and of course, the taxpayers of Pennsylvania. Opponents of this bill suggest that we can just let the status quo work through the problem. With mandatory employer contributions growing each and every year, our school districts are seeing more and more of taxpayers' hard-earned dollars intercepted by the pension system before those dollars ever have a chance in reaching the classroom. Consider this. In 2010, the unfunded liability in SERS and PSERS was computed at $34.4 billion. Today, our pension system's unfunded liability stands at $53.3 billion. That tells you what you need to know about the status quo. The status quo leaves politicians in charge of the management of the pension system with all the incentives to underfund the system and overpromise benefits in just the same way we've become accustomed to in the past. That is why this bill in front of us is a courageous proposal. This bill recognizes that there must be discipline in managing a pension system if we want it to be there for our state and for our valued employees and retirees in the long run. There has been much debate about what this bill is. I think it's also important to point out what this bill is not. Opponents of this bill in front of us suggest that our $53 billion pension crisis can be addressed by borrowing the money. Imagine, we can simply borrow money to pay off our debts. In my mind, this circular logic goes absolutely nowhere. Pension obligation bonds, as these instruments are called, represent a dangerous gamble with taxpayers' money. Other states have already showed us how badly such proposals can end. Consider the state of Illinois. They have issued $17.2 billion in pension obligation bonds since 2003. They are gambling the market with borrowed money. They have used more than half of their bond proceeds just to make their annual required payments to the fund, just as our governor and many of my colleagues who oppose this bill have indicated they would do. Despite the fact that Illinois went to the bond market to bring $17.2 billion in borrowed funds into their system, 
Their two main pension plans in that state reported funding ratios of 35.5% and 46.5% in 2011. Now let's look at Connecticut. They issued over $2 billion in pension obligation bonds in 2007. They sold those bonds paying a rate of 5.88% interest and assumed that their investments would bring in returns of 8.5%. This is what's known as arbitrage. Soon after that, we know what happened to the stock market. It tanked. The result? It made their pension system look like an underwater subprime mortgage on steroids. Their taxpayers are stuck paying not only the interest on the bonds, but they're also making up investment losses in the fund. That's on the backs of taxpayers. So let's look what pension obligation bond proposal would look like in Pennsylvania. Assuming a 30-year bond borrowing $3 billion at 4.5% interest, as our governor has suggested in his so-called pension reform proposal, the taxpayers would pay nearly $2.5 billion in interest alone over the term of the bond. Imagine making an investment decision that you know up front will cause you to lose 83% of your money. That's what a pension obligation bond represents. I've been told that some on the other side have suggested borrowing as much as nine or $10 billion in bonds. Those bonds at a 5% rate would charge $8.56 billion and $9.52 billion in interest respectively. That's interest alone. Any way you cut it, pension obligation bonds are not a viable way to address this problem. Today, this proposal in front of us it shores up our state retirement systems. It provides stability to taxpayers, to school districts, and the state government. This proposal courageously addresses one of the most prolific governmental challenges of our time without resorting to arbitrage schemes and gambling with taxpayers' hard-earned money. I encourage everyone to stand up for responsible, forward-thinking solutions. The status quo is old school. Let's recognize a new day. Let's make it morning again in Pennsylvania. Let's pass true pension reform for the citizens of Pennsylvania by passing Senate Bill 1. Thank you very much.